Well, so Tony, how you doing today? I am fantastic. Thanks for joining us on Weekend Wrap Up Roundtable. Yes. Well, thank you for join having me join because this is my first official wrap up. So I'm excited. It's great to have you on. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Tony Morrison. Yeah. Uh, what do we start? Well, with? I have some questions to oh, start out. Well, Can I just yeah, start what out? Yeah. do we start out with? Short? Well, what I'd really like to talk to her about. So Tony, one of the things that I think is really interesting is that she was in the military for a long time. How many years were you in? From 1993 to 2001. 1993 to 2001. Yeah. Eight years. Eight years. That's your general contract for being in the military. You do four years active, four years inactive. Or you can do, you can split it up, but your contract's four, if eight. And then if you do inactive, that just means that you're on an inactive ready reserve list, which in states that it protects people that have never been in the military to um, get out of draft. So we have all those folks that are sitting out there that could be potential if a draft ever comes back. Wow. Now, could they ever recall you? Not at this point. Okay. My contract is complete. It was complete four day, uh, four months to the day of September 11th of 2001. Wow. So now, why did you join the military? Did you always have a desire just to serve your country? Did you feel like it No. Was um, at 17, I knew that I wanted to travel, but I wasn't ready on what I wanted to do in school. So, and I wanted to be get paid. <laughs> I needed money and I wanted to travel. <laughs> you know that Johnny wanted to join the military too. No. Yes. And mom wouldn't let him. Well, when you're 18, is it your mom's choice anymore? It kind of was. She's she's if mean. You ever wanted to come home? She <laughs> said yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I think had he he she would have been a very proud mother. I think so too, of course. So now what did you do in the military? Like, what? Tell me first of all, what was your most exciting thing that you ever did? I want to know how many push-ups you can do, or could do, and I want to know what the scariest thing is that you ever did. Okay, so I was uh, my MOS, which is Military Occupational Specialty, was a 95 Bravo, which is a military police officer. Cool. Um, so that's what I did for eight years of my military service was escort guard. Which, Tim's sister was an MP. Okay, so I was actually an escort guard. I was never garrisoned, so I never did, like, typical police work activity. Yeah. Um, what we did is we supported a battalion that consisted of escort guard, tower guards, and an, a POW camp. So the most exciting thing that I ever did was probably, uh, well, it depends on what, exciting scary or exciting fun? Let's say exciting fun. Okay, I loved basic training. What? I loved basic training. I think that's one of our... Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because they yell, even though they yelled at you all the time and they made you do all these things, like, it was fun. It was fun. Go get my jacket? No, you can go get your jacket. It's okay. It's a little chilly out here. So, yeah, basic training was a good time. That's where you, for the first time, you get to learn how to fire all these weapons. You get to learn hand-to-hand -hand combat. You get to, you know, learn first aid and all this stuff and actually, you know, I did learn how to be a police officer, even though I never used those skills. So basic training was fun, I think. What so was this? Oh, go ahead, how, how many ways can you kill a man? A woman never tells. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I do not tell my secrets. <laughs> what was the scariest thing that you ever did? Probably spending seven months in Saudi Arabia at the age of 19. Wow. Yeah. And why was that scary? Because even though on the media, everybody back home here felt that the war was over. Because according to the media, that's what you guys know. Um, but in 1994 and 95, even though Gulf War was over and all that stuff, Scud missiles were still coming in and you didn't know what was in them. Really? Yeah. So being over there, away from home, like, you're, 
away from home when you go to basic training, obviously, you leave and go to a different state and you're with, but you're in America. And there's a lot of familiarity around America. But when you're in another country and in a, in a country that women are oppressed and you're not allowed to go off base and all of a sudden you hear, you know, bomb sirens coming in and you're living in a hut, like, yeah, that's scary. Wow, that's scary. That would so be really. So, what scary. period of time were you over the, in Saudi Arabia? Ninety four to ninety five. Oh, okay, okay. Seven months. Yeah. yeah, the longest seven months in my life. <laughs> <laughs> were you? How was the food? <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. So, soup pots <laughs> this big, right? <laughs> Coffee grounds, water boiled, a ladle to get it out. So, your little cups were this much coffee ground and that much coffee wow so and there was no creamer <laughs> no fancy nothing it so, was like, so were you eating cafeteria food or was it mres that, both okay. so they have i mean obviously there's people that go in and be cooks in the army mm -hmm. so they have mess kitchens that are set up the eggs are usually green because of what they're cooking them in um with bugs and everything else mm. And then, yeah, then there are MREs, so meals ready to eat in a brown pack mm -hmm. that are like 2,000 calories per bag. So what is something that you think is a way that us civilians, I mean, I think one of the things that's most remarkable about America is that we are an all-volunteer army, yes. right? That we're, our military is completely volunteer. Absolutely. What are some of the things that we can do to show our appreciation and show support for military people out there? Oh, there's so many different ways. Um, you know, the regular military, even though a lot of the funding has been cut, um, you can always find ways to send those comfort homes to those folks that are deployed. Um, just because we're not in wartime doesn't mean that we don't have troops in other areas of hardship. Well, we are in wartime still, right? Conflict time. Conflict, I'm sorry, conflict time. We're in conflict time, <laughs> but you know, when you first go out of the army, if you don't get deployed into a warship, you have to complete a year's term hardship in either Korea or Japan, and you're not allowed to have family over there, even if you're married. Um, so sending them to the comforts of home, mm -hmm. and then supporting our veterans, because even now, our veterans are coming back, they're very young, and there's a lot of them that are very disabled. So supporting yeah. them with clothes, um, some of the stuff that they eat, they need just for daily living is phenomenal because they don't come back and they don't have the same insurance. It's hard to get in to VA hospitals. And when you get into VA hospitals, it's like this long wait to get on the list to the treatments you need unless you're very bad. But, you know, some people are healed from very bad to, you know, still needing follow-up care. And it's just so supporting them in that way. That's great. Thank you. How many countries have you been in? Do you drink from this? I've been in seven different countries. Eight. I don't know. I haven't counted them. <laughs> How many have you had to live in? Well, just Saudi and then England. Okay. Oh, just England. Yeah. Was but that That fun? was for civilian work. Okay. Recently. So, <laughs> yeah. What is your best travel tip for us? Don't take too many clothes. Okay. <laughs> You never need as many clothes as you think you're going to need. That is true. Yes. And what? <laughs> <laughs> you never do. You never do. Like you say, I'm going to wear this dress. And no, you don't. Mm -hmm. So okay. you're schlepping around a bunch of stuff that you don't even need. Absolutely. Can I ask a question? Sure. Well, question from the audience. The veterans have, uh, don't have the same insurance. Yeah. Doesn't the military have the best insurance that you could possibly buy? Well, it's all paid for, without a doubt, but it's getting access to that care. Yeah. It's hard. There's a huge wait list. Mm -hmm. it's, so if you think of it as um, social insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Because like Canada has, you get put on a list. Like so many other countries, you get put on this list. And depending on how severe your condition is to how far you are on that list, it's the same. Walter Reed has a line that just goes out. You have to use that military insurance only for military personnel, or can you go to outside doctors and use it? You, no, so it's kind of just like insurance. If you choose to go to a private physician to get care, 
you have to pay for it and they'll reimburse up to X amount of dollars. Just like if you go out of network now, you're paying 80, 20 or whatever your plan saves, so. You're welcome. Well, Tony, thanks so much Ooh, for being on the show. Thank you. We're so happy to have you. Yes. This has been great. Yes. You have awesome. any questions for me? Oh. Any questions? How how many push-ups can you do? How many push-ups can I do or like, could what's I your do? Record? My record? So in the army you have two minutes to do push-up sit-ups and you have a certain amount of time to do a two mile run. So I was able to do 50 push-ups in two minutes, 100 sit-ups in two minutes, and I could run two miles in 16 minutes. Wow. Used to. <laughs> and all I can say is I wish I still have the muscle memory. <laughs> I need to get back to the gym. Okay. What's, so. your, what's your record? What's yeah. your record? Yeah, how many can you do? In two minutes. My record is actually 50 in like... 50. 10 minutes. 50 push-ups in 10 minutes. All the way down. Breaking the plane. 